In this video, we are going to see the derivatives of the hindgut and uh, the cloaca, right? So, uh, this is uh, the part 2 video, we saw the midgut derivatives and midgut derivatives, uh, I was talking about the non-rotation, mole rotation. In this video, you can see the only the pictures. Can you see this? Entire large intestine is towards the left side and the small intestine is towards the right side. What is it? It is because of the non-rotation and here it is reversal rotation all the reversal usually during the uh, physiological herniation when it goes back all the intestinal loops will go behind it should go behind the superior mesenteric artery but here if you see everything is coming anterior to the superior mesenteric artery so it may compress the superior mesenteric artery this is called reversal of rotation right so non-rotation this mixed rotation these are the things reversal rotation is c so this is the reversal rotation everything is coming anterior loops and then next one subhepatic subhepatic is d okay look at this this is present just below the liver subhepatic cecum and the rest uh, we don't want okay sometimes the intestinal loops if it goes in improper way it will produce something called as valveless it will obstruct all the intestine that is called valveless and it may lead to diurnal and intestinal obstruction Next thing what we are going to see is, I said in the midgut loop, it has a connection with the omphalo and rectum to the umbilicus. So this part of the proximal portion of the midgut loop is sometimes persistent. Okay, distal portion disappears because it disappears in the umbilical area. Can you see this is the umbilicus and sometimes it usually it gets obliterated entirely. Only the proximal portion sometimes if it remains back, it is called as Meckel's diverticulum or aerial diverticulum. What is the complication of this is sometimes it contains the normal intestinal mucosa but sometimes it may contain the gastric mucosa or pancreatic mucosa. So, so it may lead to gastritis, gastric ulcer. So uh, this is one of the important complication and uh, the 2 percent of the individuals you will be having this Meckel's diverticulum and it is placed 5 to 60, 50 to 60 centimeters from the ileal sickle junction and here 2 centimeters in length and you can see this sometimes you will be having a fibrous card coming out from the duct ileal diverticulum to the umbilicus so through in this card sometimes the intestinal loops will be um, via winding around this card like structure and goes for obstruction sometimes can you see the cannulation so it will be opening outside that is called as fistula omphalo fistula sometimes there will be a a collection of fluid inside that that is called omphalo cyst and this is called umbilical sinus can you see the valveless all the intestinal material everything getting wind down and um, that's all about the Meckel's diverticulum Meckel's diverticulum is a short note so while writing the short note of the Meckel's diverticulum so short note of the Meckel's diverticulum I will tell this all these points are important first or uh, this is the two slaw twin slaw it means all are coming as two to two two percent of the individuals and uh, two times two only two times more prevalent in males point number one two percent of the infants point number two two percent of the males and then it is a remnant of the proximal portion of the omphalo and rectum. don't write the distal portion it is proximal and the, the uh, two to three to six centimeters long usually two you should say two 2, 2, 2, rule of 2, 2 centimeters long arises from the anti mesentic border. If you fail to write anti mesentic border, you will not get marks. So, I will tell again and ileocecal junction and 40 to 50 centimeters in flame causes symptoms of appendicitis. I will tell here number 1, omphalo and this is the uh, 2 percent of the individuals and 2 percent of the males and then. Uh, two times commoner two times more common in males and it is two centimeters in length and it is due to the persistence of the proximal portion of the proximal portion of omphalo endric duct and the next point is um, 50 to 60 centimeters or two inches um, Two centimeters from the ileocecal junction, and then it is present in the anti mesenteric border. Normally, it contains 
ileal mucosa sometimes it may contain gastric or pancreatic tissue so it may lead to gastric ulcer it may bleed these are the complications and then sometimes warm fluid this is the mid gut loop and it is the diverticulum this is your umbilicus sometimes there is a card like structure in the distal portion the intestinal loops will be going and winding around the card and forms the valvulus complications sometimes this diverticulum they, it will be having the ulcer sometimes this diverticulum may communicate with the umbilicus that is called as fistula own flow enteric fistula sometimes this diverticulum may contain a small cyst that is called own flow enteric cyst these are the things you are supposed to write for the meckel's diverticulum now i'll go to the hindgut hindgut you should know only one word that is called endodermal cloaca so this is your gut see this four gut or mid gut last we have come to the hindgut area this is the hindgut area this hindgut opens into the cloaca this is the area called cloaca this is called endodermal cloaca if it is yellow in color it is endoderm so this is the anterior portion you have the allantois from the bladder so this is allantois which um, for the excretion of the urine so this is allantois everything allantois as well as the hindgut opens into the endodermal cloaca number two in between these two there is a septum mesenchymal tissue which is coming down that is called as urorectal septum urinary rectal urorectal septum is coming out and then it grows down and it divides when it grows down there is a infolding of the, this cloacal wall is getting folded so when the wall is getting flow, folded what will happen it comes and here is the area can you see it is given in blue in color so it is ectoderm so ectoderm you will be having the lining of the uh, anal verge it means uh, the anus area so here you have a membrane called cloacal membrane so cloacal membrane usually uh, at from the beginning you will be having the membrane called as cloacal membrane so up to that there is a small space that is called cloacal membrane and this is anus so this is the lining epithelium endoderm and this is ectoderm in between you have the cloacal membrane so the urorectal septum is going down and divides the mm, endodermal cloaca into anterior portion urogenital uro genital sinus urogenital it means urinary as well as genital sinus and posteriorly it is divided into rectum and upper part of the anal canal so three de derivatives are being formed here one is the rectum and upper part of the anal canal and the urogenital sinus so three structures are being formed by the urorectal septum can you see now what happens seventh week seventh week usually it disappears look at this Uh, apoptotic cell death okay right so cloaca is an expanded terminal portion that and all we have seen and the urorectal septum because of this gene endodermal beta catenin signaling this is very important for pgs because of the signaling is required for the urorectal septum development so the urorectal septum is being developed and then uh, the fold in grows three parts just now i said the rectum upper part of the anal canal and the urogenital sinus and uh, next is what happens cloacal membrane rupture so cloacal membrane rupture takes place how it takes place apoptotic cell death what is called apoptotic natural cell death because of cell death the membrane ruptures so there is a lumen formation but if there is a lumen formation it is temporarily closed by so this lower part i showed the clo cloacal membrane it is closed by the can you see this lower portion this lower portion is ruptured and it is temporarily this area is closed by the uh, endodermal plug ectodermal ectodermal area is thickened and forms a plug again this area is become obliterated after few weeks okay what will happen there is a canalization canalization means again there is a gap formation so this is called as anal pit okay now i will show you here okay apoptotic cell death anorectal lumen is temporarily closed by epithelial plug and the mesenchymal proliferation produce elevation this is from the ectoderm so over so this eighth week of anal pit 
developed by the eighth week of development anal canal already we know now the difference between these two i will show you look at this this is the mm, yellow color yellow color means endoderm so this is hindgut hindgut will be uh, transformed into rectum and upper part of the anal canal lower part of the anal canal only i said the cloacal membrane disappears and uh, because of the ectodermal thickening ectoderm that's a blue color ectodermal thickening they form a plug which closes this orifice that is called ectodermal plug the plug later on it gets dissolved and forms the canal now what happens the delineation between these two these are all called anal valves this uh, border of the anal valve is called pectinate line and here two centimeters to uh, uh, just in front of the anus is called as white line of Hilton where the epithelial change takes place this area you have the columnar epithelium and this area you have the squamous epithelium and if you come to the anus here you will be having stratified squamous keratinase because skin is there here it is non keratinase since it is a wet area these are the epithelial changes so you should know one thing these things are up to the pectinate line it is formed by the hindgut and below the pectinate line it is from the ectodermal thickening the plug is formed that is why it is called as anal pit and below that you have the anus so this is how you have to define all these things if it fails to obliterate this ectodermal plug what will happen that will lead to imperforate anus look at this neonate the imperforate anus normal opening is not there so look at this this one last portion what happens after this all is formed the ganglionic cells autonomic ganglionic cells they migrate and come and settle down in the uh, muscular layer and the mucosal layer that is called myantric plexus in the muscular layer if the ganglionic cells if they fail to migrate what will happen this particular ganglion this segment of the large intestine fails to dilate so it has become narrowed that is called as a ganglionic segment that is called congenital megacolon or Hirschsprung's disease so Hirschsprung's disease usually they ask in MCQ it is because of the absence of the ganglionic cells absence of the migration of the ganglionic cells this is called Hirschsprung's disease congenital megacolon why it is called megacolon this area is become narrowed because it cannot dilate because of the absence of ganglionic cells but the upper portion is become dilated because it has normal cells and then anorectal anomalies so now the anal and rectum so anorectal anomalies what are the things rectum sometimes it is not only the rectum is formed and the anal canal is not formed so what will happen rectum will be communicated with the uh, urogenital system that is called recto vesical fistula or rectum to vagina that is called recto vaginal fistula persistent cloaca and recto cloacal fistula otherwise next all the fistulas we will see geno perineal fistula this and all too much for the uges this one is very interesting see the upper part of the rectum is formed the lower part of the anal upper part of the anal canal is not formed so the rectum is communicated with the vagina in females that is called recto vaginal fistula and in males sometimes it will be communicated with the urethra that is called recto urethral fistula rectum to urethra recto urethral fistula so these are the important clinical applications you can write for the hindgut so hindgut the most important one is congenital megacolon a ganglionic segment absence of the ganglionic cells migration that is very important for this mm. megacolon dilated because of the absence of autonomic ganglion cells this is very important autonomic ganglion cells red oncogene product is for the pgs and then here I have showed you a few anomalies and here is the imperforate anus picture and this picture is very important develops from the four uh, hindgut endoderm and it's from the ectoderm and this is the anal pit these are the important points and anal stenosis we have seen that's all about what is the gene responsible for the production of endodermal beta catrin endodermal beta catenin signaling is requested for the formation of urorectal septum if the urorectal septum is not developed you will not be having the difference between the urogenital sinus and the rectum so this is very important that's all about the cloaca